Okay, YouTubers, I've got a little bit of a parts acquisition update. I wanted to point out these uh, 5 16 18 set plugs, set screws. I got these. It comes two to a pack for 99 cents at your local tractor supply store. I will warn you, they are very hard to drill. I don't know for sure what I could have done differently, but I had to have two of these, one of which you use to do the converter restriction. Online, the information you're gonna find is, it ranges anywhere from 110 thousandths up to 150 or 60 thousandths. So, you know, do your own research, find out where you wanna start. I chose to follow a proven recipe, it was 125 thousandths, so that's what I use. You can also buy these little set screws that are made, I believe, of brass, which would be way easier than this to drill. But you have to have two of these. Murder feed hole in your pump restrictor. And then if you're going to remove the spring and the third gear accumulator, one of the other modifications is plugging the orifice. That's also a 5 16 18 uh, set drill it out for 17 64 or 7 30 seconds and then you run your tap in and then you put a little loctite on it and you can plug that little hole in your valve this is the turbo 350 um, main pump bearing but it's basically a torrington bearing that you use if you're going to rollerize the rear thrust on your turbo 400 build if you look on my channel you'll see the videos where i talk about you know, rollerizing your case for your turbo 400 cheap doesn't cost that much in the heavy duty rebuild recommendations and again go to the crankshaft coalition uh, turbo 400 recipe they talk about finding a 95 to 100 thousandths thick case ring that's what this is this is a 95 thousandths case ring snap ring to hold in those forward clutch packs. Anyway, I got that as part of my heavy duty upgraded parts list, a drop and run UPS delivery. That's my Borg Warner 34 element Sprag. Now again, you have to have the smooth receiver area on your direct drum to have a direct bolt in to the 34 element Sprag. Um, I did choose to go ahead and spend the extra couple of dollars, it's not a huge amount, to get the name brand product. You will see, uh, I think it's 71 and older, Turbo 400s should have the smooth direct drum that allows you to just literally just install the 34 element sprag and get that stronger design go to the crankshaft coalition turbo 400 recipe build it okay 1964 and 1965 turbo 400s came with a sprag setup in that re reaction carrier rather than the the roller setup good about the 64 and 65 reaction carrier setup is it runs a sprag type roller bearing which is way stronger and recommended for the big horsepower nitrous and turbo applications and I'm assuming they're meaning above a thousand horsepower when they make that claim but there again do your research and find out what's needed that's my Borg Warner 34 element sprag now this thing is a little bit controversial in my mind. This is supposed to be the preferred filter for a performance turbo 400 with a, what they're calling a metal screen type filter. Now what that screen's made of, I don't know. But the part number that I found online was this AT540 which is some kind of Allison transmission, I'm assuming, filter that works in the Turbo 400s. It's empty. Like, I haven't taken it out of the bag yet because it's got all kinds of weird, like, Cosmoline or something on it to keep it from rusting. 
but the main area of the filter, there's nothing in there. It's empty, but if you look super, super close, it looks like right where it hooks to your pickup tube, there's just a little metal screen. So, um, you know, <laughs> I didn't expect it to look like this. So I'm gonna do a little more research, pull it out of the bag and just verify what type of screen is actually filtering the fluid. Because I can't imagine anybody just having a pickup mounted in there with no screening material whatsoever. That AT540, if you look online, that is supposed to be the low or no restriction filter uh, upgrade, we'll call it this TransPak kit, but I'm not gonna be using this junky cork gasket, that's for sure. The fiber gasket, like I was torn because I don't like the cork gaskets. I don't really care for the rubber gaskets. So one of the other just uh, rebuilder recommendations, I guess you'd call it, is to order one of these fiber pan gaskets. I like the fact that it comes already flat, that you don't have to lay it out, heat it up, try to get it to lay flat. Um, came highly recommended, so I was like, well, it's not that expensive. I'll go ahead and order one, and that way I don't have to fight with it when I put it together. I'm still undecided whether I'm gonna use this pressure spring for my uh, pump or if I'm gonna use the blue spring that was already in the pump when I disassembled it, that's still kind of up in the air. The two main reasons that I purchased this kit, I wanna be able to use this one, two shift valve. That already modified one, two shift valve. I don't wanna to have to grind flats on my factory one and go through that nonsense. So went ahead and opted to buy this kit because it comes with the modified one two shift valve and it's got a really small little brass plug that actually plugs the exhaust port in your one two shift valve in the valve body those two pieces alone are what you need to be able to override your turbo four, turbo 400 one two shift override that doesn't allow you to hold first gear so once you do the modified valve plug that exhaust port you got full control over first gear and can shift it at whatever rpm you want to so that's my main reason for buying this kit then when i started measuring the holes in the shift plate this plate if you see this color plate generally speaking and i'm not saying this is written in stone when you see this color of a plate it's an aftermarket uh, separator plate most likely from B&M because they're really popular or famous for using this kind of coating problem is the person who rebuilt that transmission last time drilled the second gear and third gear holes so big that I can't use that plate because what you have let's see if you guys can see that right here is your second gear orifice hole and right here is your third gear orifice hole, all right? They, for some reason, drilled both of those holes out to 188 thousandths of an inch, or I, I believe that's like 3 sixteenths of an inch. That's huge. That is a huge hole to put in your uh, separator plate, which is gonna make your transmission slam gears. I'm not talking about quick, firm. I'm talking about it's gonna slam the shifts and that's really bad like I, if you guys have ever seen transmissions that basically have deteriorated in a short period of time that's generally caused by it shifting too hard you want fast firm shifts you don't want it to slam parts okay so when you guys pick your shift level you also have to take into consideration all the other modifications you're doing to the fluid flow in the valve body since i'm dual feeding since i'm uh, eliminating the third set they call it the two three or third gear accumulator spring we're blocking that port where which that one modification in turn firms up your one two and your two three shifts so then you don't go hog wild 
on your separator plate or you're going to end up in that mess where you got a, a transmission that slams gears it doesn't shift gears and that causes damage okay i hope you guys follow what i'm saying um basically i'm following a proven recipe from several of the better known uh, transmission builders uh, because i'm doing those other modifications to my valve body my one two or second gear hole that's only going to be 125 thousandths my third gear hole 140 thousandths because i've made those other modifications to speed up and firm up the the shifts basically by um, manipulating the fluid flow in the valve body already there's no reason to have these holes super honking big because all that's going to do is cause problems so because that other valve body separator plate was you know basically drilled out to some ungodly size that wasn't needed i needed separator plate one two shift valve uh, comes with that little brass plug to plug the exhaust hole in the uh one two orifice or whatever they call that there's that little plug down there in the corner basically just hammers in until it gets flush and you're good to go so you know I got a good deal on it so I'm not crying it's good to go and it'll get my valve body set up the way I want it um, again go to the C crankshaft coalition website I will try to put a link in the description below um, it literally has a recipe that starts you know at the top you read all the way through and it's going to help you guys understand what's inside the transmission what can you modify what needs to be upgraded how to do it how to you know it's step by step guys it's not rocket science and when you get into the turbo 400 and you realize you know i've really shorted myself over the years by not building transmissions myself because it just all seemed like voodoo you know what i mean like whenever you think about building a transmission, most people's minds immediately go straight to, oh my God, there's a lot of pieces in there and everything's gotta be super clean. And uh, if I get that stuff out of order, I'll never be able to get it back. Well, you know, stop all that nonsense. When you start building, or let's just say you get a Turbo 400 core, when you start tearing it down and you realize that it's just modules, it's literally sections, smaller little projects. You're gonna pull the pump out, that's a project. You're gonna pull your uh, forward clutch drum and, and shaft out, that's a project. You're gonna have your intermediate clutches, that's a really small project. Then you're gonna have your direct drum, that's a project. Then you have your case, that you know you've got two bands in the case and a thrust bearing you know it's literally so simple when you break it down into smaller chunks or smaller portions and then realize okay rebuilding this transmission isn't a huge job you're just doing a lot of little jobs or little projects that all insert into a case it's that simple so don't, don't run away from the idea of, you know, rebuilding your own Turbo 400 because I guarantee it's something you can do. And if you search the internet and YouTube, you can't run into an, a procedure other than if you're going to machine something to accept more clutches or, you know, something along that line. But your general rebuild, heavy duty rebuild, you know, parts upgrades, you can circumvent anything you don't need any super special tool, super compressors, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that difficult and you can figure workarounds for anything. So appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please check out the channel, watch some of my other videos. I try to put as much information as I can into each video. Hopefully you guys will like, subscribe and share.